Hi guys, a couple of weeks ago I visited a small ashram in the south of India. It's called Swami Krishnananda Yoga Shala. One of my friends did a yoga therapy teacher training course in this ashram and he absolutely loved it. So I decided to visit this ashram to see it with my own eyes and to learn more about their yoga teacher training courses. a detailed review of the ashram and the yoga teacher training courses in my blog pathyoga.net so if you'd like to know more if you would like to contact them directly you can find all the information in the description below I would like to share an interview that I had with the ashram director, Dr. Ashutosh. He's also the main teacher of the ashram. And in this interview, he talks about yoga therapy and Ayurveda. But I have to apologize for the quality of the video. Dr. Ashutosh, he was very busy during the day for the teacher training course. And so we were able to meet only around 6 p.m. So there was not much light left. So the video is a little bit dark. But I hope you still be able to enjoy the video and perhaps learn something from it. Okay, simple questions must be complicated, it's just about yoga therapy. Means you are saying that if I am not able to answer, then I am uh, the most stupid person who cannot <laughs> even answer the simplest <laughs> questions on yoga. That is not, this no. is not good. You should be saying that I will be asking you tough questions. If you are able to answer, it's okay. If you are not able to answer, then no, also it's okay. We don't have to go too in-depth. You know? no. It's more like a you number of Understand my psych also. Not. Do okay. not put me on that bar. That's okay. <laughs> I am asking you simple questions. If you answer, it's okay. If you do not answer, it's a real stupid person. No? <laughs> One who cannot answer simple questions is a yes. stupid person. Okay. You put it's me on that I mean. bar. So I will be either on the Muda scale or on the, on the Kshipta scale. I huh? will <laughs> not even be on that <laughs> Vikshipta scale. <laughs> Vikshipta. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. Okay. So I put so, you then impossible question. My God, do it. <laughs> At least you have thought that I can answer it. That is the best thing. No? Yes, I love you. I respect you for that. Yeah, see. You are giving me that authority to define yoga therapy? Well, I am not an authority on yoga therapy or yoga as such. Using the tools of yoga, when we say yoga, we are talking about yoga and whole, not just Hatha Yoga or Raj Yoga. Using the tools of yoga, right from Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Raj Yoga and the ancillaries of yoga like Mantra Yoga or the other forms of yoga, Lai Yoga, Nath Yoga. Using the tools of yoga to effectively manage the lifestyle disorders should be put into the category of yoga therapy. It's like an ocean. You can use the ocean for anything. Take some water out of it, to bath into it, swim into it, dive into it, sail onto it, move to some other place through it, into a shape. Same is for the yoga. You can use it. You can use it for anything. And therapy also is a part of it. Use it for that. If I said yoga and whole, it includes Raj Yoga. Raj Yoga itself is not just physical therapy. It has been projected that way because of the demand. The demand was okay. We want it, we want to use it for physical fitness. And the demand was fulfilled by some other styles. Now those who were making that demand, they themselves are saying, oh, this is not yoga. Like for the modern medicine, there was a demand, quick relief, nothing to do with pathya, pathya, what to eat, what not to eat, nothing to do with your strict disciplined lifestyle, your dincharya, and modern medicine came into being. Now we are against modern medicine. We created the demand. We said we do not follow, we don't want to follow any discipline. No. That is why this has come into the category of, okay, yoga means for some, 
who went into it only physical therapy or physical part of it that is just the tip of the iceberg rather if you say yoga is something which you cannot even redefine that way that will be better those who have been to uh, those who have been to the diving sea diving can they think of diving again will give them the same kind of fish inside does it give you dive once come out and then you dive again the same fish will not be there same way for yoga you dive once you come out you dive again you will not have the same kind of experience it will be different ocean the physical part is just a part of it but you cannot ignore that why ask me why because yoga the one we are doing the hatha yoga part or the raj yoga part you try to understand that it is basically trying to an a very systematic and scientific attempt a scientific successful attempt i should be saying to deepen your awareness from the grossest level to the subtlest level what is the grossest level of awareness our actions whatever we have created outside that is gross you can see that they have been divided into yamas and niyamas then what is the gross thing our body the awareness of the body is by asanas after that a bit subtler than body is the breath so awareness of the breath by pranayama then comes your sense organs pratyahara withdrawal then the thoughts everything put together at one place dharna desh bandha chitta se dharna then they say oh now you can go for ego also because to make out ego is so subtle to make out its edges its weight its manipulative manipulative ways you need to have something something very big and something very subtle dhyan got that so it is all a game of very scientific very systematic very successful and sure way of moving from the grossest to the subtlest because gross is finite and in subtle is infinite more gross you become more finite you become more subtle you become more infinite you become the game is from moving from small things to the bigger things this much of happiness this much happiness this much happiness infinite happiness now in for to have infinite happiness you have to have you have to have the awareness of the subtlest you have to become the subtlest is it okay okay my soul tells us that thing doesn't matter but you are putting tough questions toughest questions uh, god help me the third question he's taking out some question from his bag <laughs> he looks to be a simple chap but he's tough okay doesn't matter <laughs> and he's he's wearing a military t-shirt also my god look at that i'm worried <laughs> yeah please the entire part of yoga therapy if i say is based upon the fundamental principles of ayurveda then i'm sure i am on the right foot you start with the basic principles or basic cause of disease according to ayurveda you go for the definition of health according to ayurveda when they say sam dosha sam dhatu sam agni mala kriya prasann indriya atmana swastha iti abhidhiyate that is the basic definition of health according to ayurveda in which they talk about optimal or balanced doshas proper adequate dhatus proper elimination of the malas optimal agni in you and you should be having at peace mental state that is the definition they give in ayurveda now from there you come to how to have balanced doshas to have balanced doshas to have this agni in a balanced way to have proper elimination of the malas they say you should be going for what they say you should be going for either promo- preventive approach means you are 100% okay at present you are in balance 
but because ayurveda says that life is a dynamic process it is not static at all you are into health tomorrow you will be into health no guarantee because you are exposed to many things on the mental level also on the physical level also including your diet your lifestyle people you meet your age your profession the time of the day the season everything is going on so dosha they are always in a dynamic equilibrium how to maintain health if you have health that also can be done by yoga if you have a disease means your doshas are imbalanced your agni which is one of the criteria of health it is out of balance your dhatus they are not adequate your eliminatory processes they are not perfect in proper functioning which are giving rise to either these things are giving rise to a wrong mental or a deranged mental state or a i should say imbalanced mental state or your imbalanced mental state can give rise to these things when they say raja tamach dwaucha manasa dosha avadavrito that the psychosomatic disease can be because of tamas ignorance in you or rajas desire or passion in you no they are the cause of psychosomatic diseases which start from the mind and show up on the body or you have imbalanced dosha both according to yoga can be cured or balanced using the principle of ayurveda itself when they talk about shat karmas you see one of the greatest gift of hat yoga is shat karmas the six cleansing acts they are given if you go to shloka number 21 chapter 2 hat yoga pradipika it says med shlesh adhika purva shat karmani samacharet means people in whom the three doshas are not in proper balance they should be doing shat karmas in the form of neti dhati basti nauli trataka kapalbhati okay one thing they go to the extent of saying if you if you do not want to do if you are not able to do shat karmas then also by pranayama you can balance the three doshas in shloka number 43 atyo pratipika chapter 2 before starting introducing mankind to eight kinds of kumbhakas in shloka number 44 when he talks about surya bhedan ujjayi vastrika brahmari sitli sitkari murcha plavani before that also he says the same thing that you can balance the doshas by pranayama look at the beauty they not even give that they say that okay the two main principles of therapy shaman or shodhanam suppression of a disease or cleansing of a disease can be taken care of by the yogic tools vasti vaman vireka is shodhanam what is vasti the vasti in shat karma it is vasti in panch karma of ayurveda it is vasti in shat karma of yoga vaman vomiting kunjal dhauti it is as panch karma also in ayurveda in yoga it is without you do not need of ayurvedic physician you do not need those herbs lagu shank prakshalan vireka in shat karmas varoda dhautis and in that you have vireka itself virechana in panch karma the physical level i am telling you tri dosha now come over to the mental one raja tamach manasa dauch dosha abudo ritau da rajas and tamas are the cause of psychosomatic disease according to ayurveda he gives the treatment ayurveda charak he says dhi dhairya atma di vigyanam mano dosh ashadam param dhi wisdom discriminatory knowledge dhairya patience atma di vigyanam the knowledge of the self they are the three tools you can use for any of the psychosomatic diseases this is what ayurveda is saying and look at yoga they give you dhi hanupaya vivek khyati avipulva hanupaya discriminatory knowledge unperturbed is the means to kevalyam hanam moksha freedom dhairya pratyahara ath ata samprabakshyami pratyahara uttamam gheran samita rishi gheran is telling king chandakapali now i'll tell you something about pratyahara by which you can take care of you can withdraw from any kind of 
sense object distraction dhairya atmadi vigyanam what is atmadi vigyanam dhyanam dhyanam nam swarupasya sahajam bhanam uchyate na idat karam visheshanam va sagunupasanam japa ayurveda talks about dhyan or the knowledge of true self will be one thing which will take care of your rajas and tamas and yoga gives that tool Ayurveda says ragaadi rogan satat anusaktan sheshakaya prasutan rogan that every all the mental disease psychosomatic disease they start from attachment yoga says take care of attachment by pratyahara withdraw withdraw and withdraw without following the basic principles of ayurveda you cannot move into yoga therapy if you are doing that then you are on the i said two boats at the same time is it okay how many marks did i get <laughs> you see the mark <laughs> yes <laughs> right yes okay every time he asks a question i get that nervous now <laughs> i am sir i am paying to 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 everyone i got chamundi devi over there she is looking at me yeah absolutely not no conflict at all i'll just say modern medicine is the first page of medical science ayurveda the middle part of it the middle section of it and yoga the last part of it that is the end the culmination of the medical science leap apart modern medicine or something the health sciences the life sciences i'll say in the life sciences modern medicine is the first section ayurveda the middle section and yoga the ultimate section there is no contradiction it's absolutely parallel one thing is leading to another to another just the unfortunate part of it is that we have come to the first one the first section in the last when we had reached the state of the yoga and ayurveda 5000 years earlier there was no need to come back to the first section we could have gone far more deeper into it that is unfortunate it is very unfortunate for some reasons we came back to the first section after going through the whole book it is the, it's only the time going by within say a decade from now it will become imperative and mandatory for each and every medical school to have yoga and ayurveda as a curriculum they will not be able to do without it it has to be you cannot ignore a 5000 year old science which is holding its ground even today and with the same force truth cannot be washed away you can irritate it but you cannot wash it away truth is yoga is the ultimate science yoga is the last page the last section of life sciences modern medicine is only on the anamaya kosha yoga is on right up to the anandamaya kosha modern medicine takes first kosha we have five sheets modern medicine doesn't talk about the planes of existence the six or seven planes of existence modern medicine doesn't talk about the tamasic lifestyle the rasic lifestyle the satvic lifestyle if after so much of this what do you say the limitations of modern medicine not being acknowledged if after that we have to move into these things it is as if i don't know what to call it but i'll put it more like atavism not like evolution if you do not know a reason for anything doesn't mean that you will just put it into some somewhere where you cannot where you cannot even think of that what is it and see the greatest part of it the greatest deepest humility of the science this science says it is an experiential science you experience it and then decide what is good for you what is bad for you it is not on any postulate no hypothesis no theories if after a science saying that look have this drink this taste this then decide whether it is good for you or bad for you if after that we are saying we will not do it and we will do something which just based on hypothesis then who to blame our own minds because yoga is a discipline because yoga wants that you should be having some lines drawn that is the only reason we don't want to follow it
well for us the motive is to let them taste yoga and whole let them be into a position where they can challenge their own habitual thinking pattern their own beliefs where they are able to challenge their limits they are able to taste the benefits of yoga as such all the four streams included on themselves and once they are able to do that then there is no going back then for them there is no going back they have already transformed they will be helping others even if they help one person in their lifetime it is okay just one person it was like very small satori which had guided us throughout that is young lady sitting with the sleeping with a 5 year old kid on the sea beach early morning the kid wakes her up saying mama see so many fishes writhing in pain on the beach and the mama says look kid there are more than thousands and thousands of fishes on the beach we cannot help them let us sleep and she sleeps again after half an hour she gets up and looks around the kid is not there worried she looks around the kid is right there on the beach and with the tiny steps he is picking up one fish at a time mumbling something and then putting that fish into the sea interesting the mother goes to see what is this kid doing and what is he saying the kid is picking up one fish and walking towards the sea saying that no mama my effort will make a difference to this fish and then dropping that fish in the ocean it is really that way just change one life in your lifetime by giving yoga to that person and like i said that when their low self esteem is done with when they have that sense of security in themselves when they feel the whole of existence the sense of existence is security when they are able to realize that yes bliss is inside the pleasure is not out there it is in here when they are able to think beyond forgiveness that it is only love there is no question of forgiving anyone because nobody is doing anything wrong whatever has happened to him or her is on the path to evolution was just an experience so that the person can transcend that life is an experience when the person is in communion with oneself and the entire surroundings when the person is in the on the path of truthfulness that is all if you can do that for others one person one person like i know i i revere my master because he did something to me my life has changed if i can do that to someone that is my duty rather now because i got that thing from my master from existence i have to pay it back if i just take all those things with me not paying it back that is like committing a crime so i have to keep the things in balance whatever you get at least pay it back if not more that is it namaskar 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 thank you very much you like to give us some party and i love ice cream so <laughs> can have ice cream or something <laughs> no no we will not let you go you see this is now a village has you come on bike <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you would like to know more about the ashram and the yoga teacher training courses, you can find all the information in the description below. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a like and to share with your friends. And also, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next one.